What's going on guys? It's Opulent Vision back with episode three of Road to Sub 20. So a couple things before we get to the Q&A. First off, I'm really enjoying this series and making these videos for you guys. I feel like I'm getting better, uh, but also on the other hand, these videos take a little bit of time to film and to practice in between the videos. There's a lot of work behind the scenes that goes into it. So I'd appreciate you guys if you like the video and, just, and leave some sort of comment, whether you like the video or if you didn't like the video, things I can improve on basically. Also, if you guys see anything in my solves that I could definitely work on this week, let me know. I suppose this week I started with learning. I kind of went back to the cross. I wanted to kind of be color neutral. I tried a solve on the yellow cross somewhere in here and it just didn't go very well. So I might try to keep working on being color neutral very briefly, kind of in the background. Also, I realized I've been trying really hard to get good solves for these videos and re-recording. So this time I realized I'm only harming myself. So basically this is my one take after warming up. So if you guys have any other tips, let me know in the comments, but let's get into the Q&A. First question coming in from Cubic Armostic. His question is, could you ever see yourself going to another Rubik's competition? I'd be down. I think a lot of you guys know, but I live in the middle of nowhere in Kansas, so there's not really any competitions nearby. And I'm kind of at that point where, you know, if I do want to go to a competition, I want it to be a big one. So maybe, maybe this year or next year I'll go to Worlds or something. But also this series is helpful because if I go to something like that, I want to be better than I am now. So I guess we'll keep working on it and potentially be at a competition in the future. The next question comes from Stardust Cubing. He asks, if you could have any cube in the world, which one would you choose? That's a really tough question because I have so many cubes. Um, I guess right now my main is this YS3M you see me using. I, I seem to keep switching my main like every week or two, which, you know, I just need to pick something and stick with it. But I guess if I were to, you know, have like one cube, um, you know, I'd want to make something you know, that's almost along the lines like lightweight, uh, like the GAN 13 or 14, um, but also has the potential of something like the RS3M where you can really set it up, and, you know, make it feel like how you want it to feel. I think a lot of the thing with these GAN cubes that I've owned, you can kind of set them up however you want, but it has like the same like turning feeling, if you know what I mean. Like it's airy, it's light. But, you know, I really like the controllability of the RS3M 2020. So maybe if there was like some kind of hybrid between the two, I think that would be like the cube. But we'll see what keeps coming out because apparently all these brands drop like 10 cubes a year, which is hard to keep up with in full honesty. But if they make something like that and you guys find it before I do, I would definitely like to know. Gladiator6 comments, do you think you will ever get 1 million subs? Now, that's a little bit tough of a question. Um, after I got hacked, I kind of stagnated at 117,000. Um, and my views have been like really low compared to what they used to be. So it's kind of like restarting that whole chain of like getting subscribers again. Um, I will definitely be at 1 million subs one day, um, but I need to keep improving my videos, my shorts, and keep working kind of towards, I guess, that goal with you guys. So if there's any videos y'all want to see in the future or videos that I guess you think would help me grow, feel free to comment those too. I'd love to, uh, definitely love to make those videos. I love the, uh, the will it lube series. That's fun to me, but those don't seem to do too well on YouTube. So, you know, maybe it's like making a whole switch in my regimen of, you know, like what I'm creating for videos. Uh, gladiator also comments, will you go to a comp soon? Kind of went over that. Uh, and what are my cubing and YouTube goals for 2024? Um, I guess that's kind of tough. I want to learn how to solve the Mega Minx. I know it's pretty easy. I can get all the way to the last layer and just don't know like PLL, if that's what it's called on it. I ain't got a clue. Um, but learning that, learning square one, basically I just want to learn all the WCA events. Um, one thing you guys really wanted me to do was clock and I've never owned a clock. So uh, Rubik's clock that is. I, I own clocks like watches and stuff. Anyway, that's way off topic. But uh, I guess just learning all the WCA puzzles, which I think is definitely obtainable for 2024. So maybe that's another series we do um, in the future. You know what I mean? Next question from Cubix Mastero. He says, uh, is the Tornado V3M standard good as a main? I don't own that cube, but I've used one. Um, one of my friends had it. 
I liked the feeling, I liked the turning style, um, but I guess for the price, there's a lot better cubes, especially if you're like a beginner cuber. I see myself as intermediate, so I'm, I don't really have that, I guess, big of preference, but I thought, I thought it was all right, but I think there's better things out there um, to make that shorter. He also asks, in which year did you start cubing? I think it was, man, I think it was like 2011 was like my first time solving a cube. I'm old guys, I'm old, okay. Uh, question three, why did you change your name from Opulent Vision to MicroStrategy? I've been getting this comment a lot, um, and I don't remember if I addressed this in my other, I guess, Q&A videos, but after I got hacked, uh, YouTube finally let, my, let me change my name back about two weeks later, um, and I've changed it back to Opulent Vision. Everything looks good on my end, but a couple of you guys still see it as micro strategy. Um, I'm working with YouTube at trying to get that amended. I'm not sure where they're at because they're so hard to get to respond to like emails and stuff. Um, but you know, I guess we'll see if it ever just automatically switches back in the future. I've tried changing it again to like Opulent Vision 1 um, to see if like, oh, maybe it's lagging behind or something. Nope, still won't change it for a couple of you guys. So, uh, Also, I thought this was fun, but Hexperm commented that he finally got to sub 20, so congratulations, Hexperm. I'm close behind you, so you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll have to surpass you one day. We'll see. <laughs> but keep working at it, guys. Uh, Justin Cow, he comments, do you like maglev or normal spring better? Springs better. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to read this off my computer. I'm very dyslexic, so... Uh, I guess to me, I, I guess grew up cubing with normal springs. It fits my turning style better. Um, so I guess I like normal springs, but I definitely see the draw to maglev, which is super fun. Um, also I think we're finally at that point in the video where we're going to be doing a challenge here. So you guys should comment your challenges for me. I guess I'll start slowly doing these at the end of the video, but I wanted to try to solve this cube one-handed and just kind of see where I sat with that. So this is me scrambling it up right now, and then we are going to solve this one-handed here. A couple years ago, I did a competition. Well, a couple years ago, this was like 2015, uh, I did a competition, and I signed up for one-handed uh, thinking that no one would join and I would just automatically win, which was not the case. Uh, so I joined this one-handed, I guess, event, and I ended up getting two minutes and 40 seconds on my first solve. Uh, the cutoff was, I think it was like a minute 30, which was like extremely fast for someone who's never really done one handed solves in their life. Um, so I really tried, I couldn't get below 230. Uh, so I was like curious, you know, I'm older now, my hands are bigger um, than they were at that point. How fast could I solve it? And if you guys see, I'm already doing OLL at, I guess under a minute. So it's going to be really close. I don't remember exactly what I got when I filmed it, but it was not two minutes 30. So I definitely got faster at one handed when my hands got bigger. Um, it's just not an event that I ever practice. So I never expect to be like, you know, sub 30 one handed, but you know, maybe that's one thing I look at in the future, but this is me doing like two or three look PLL, which I thought was really funny. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm done talking about this solve. <laughs> you guys can enjoy the rest of that. I appreciate y'all for watching. If you made it this far, go ahead and comment dog so I know you made it to the end, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.